Hi and welcome to Let's Talk all about books, arts and events. This week we have a very special half hour with one of Britain's leading novelists, Kate Atkinson. She's the author of nine huge bestsellers and has been in Auckland for last week's Writers and Readers Festival. Kate's been described no less as one of the greatest writers of our time. So it's a great pleasure to welcome her to Let's Talk. Hello Kate, welcome to the studio. Oh, it's thank you Lizzie. great to have you here. How do you cope with statements like that, you know, world's, you know, one of the world's greatest living authors sort of thing? Uh, well, I don't believe them <laughs> to first start. I don't know, there's, there's a whole lot of stuff that sort of washes over you, or at least it should wash over you, because I think if you start believing, believing it, what, yes. then I think that's when you're in trouble. So I found that, I mean, I was born Catherine, I'm a Catherine, not a Kate, and I sort of gradually morphed into Kate through Katie and Kate, and I find what I do now, I use Catherine a lot, um, so that I sort of separate myself off from Kate Atkinson. Okay, yes. So, that so, so you know, she does all that stuff, she's the greatest living writer. I <laughs> suppose Kate I'm actually is. me. <laughs> but I guess when you're a top author like you are, Kate is the brand really, isn't she? She's the person she that you is. have to sort of be kind to and, and have a Facebook for and, and come and do the fronting for. Yes, and she does, she does all that on her own because yes. I don't go near my <laughs> Facebook or my Twitter or anything. Yes, there is a, there is a strange separation. Yes. But I, I looked I, at your Facebook page yesterday and it said you? that it was um, maintained by your publisher in yes. England, Transworld, isn't yes, it? Yes. yes. And so I got the impression that you didn't have much to do with it. But no, I guess every no. now and again they will be expecting you to be there and... No, no, they, no yes, they, they, they keep me away from social media because they know I don't like it. So yeah. I think they're worried I might say something horrible and then that would be very bad publicity. In um, mm. one of your books I was reading recently, it talked about a character having just made this succession of choices of keeping on having taken a certain fork in the road and mm -hmm. that's how their life had played out. You yes. seem to be um, really interested in those notions of choices and doors opening and closing and where I, it leads us I all. I think it's less from a personal point of view, in a way, than it is from a structural novelistic point of view because it gives you so much potential to be creative and to, to fictionalise things and to imagine things that I think it's, it's one of the few areas where, you know, I mean, I can say, oh, you know, I made a mistake in 1970 and that's why I'm where I am now or whatever. But it's, with, with fiction, you can think, you can explore it properly, I think. And you can, you have the possibility of, you know, bringing people back to life mm. and, and cheating death and exploring all the different paths. And you can't do that in life. You know, you make one mm. mistake and that's it. You're kind of <laughs> set yes. on, the, on the wrong path or maybe the right path. But I think with fiction, it opens up the imagination. Yeah. But we do it in our personal lives too, don't we? Oh, I yeah, mean, you know, it's that yeah, whole yeah. sort of, gosh, I wonder how different yeah. my life would have been yeah. if I'd done uh, yeah. instead of yeah. the other thing yeah. 20 years uh, yeah. ago. Yeah, definitely. And yet in the end, it's futile anyway, isn't it? Because it, you can't make it happen in real and life. Also, yeah. I was thinking, so I was thinking, oh, well, if I had my time over again, I would have done this and this and that. I would like to work for MI5 or MI6. I would <laughs> like to be a spy or something. But, you know, or done this or done that. And then I think, oh, yes, but what the, the, the backstop, the bottom line is that you have, cho well, I have children, mm. and therefore they wouldn't exist. And you feel such guilt as a mother that you've just eradicated your children from your fantasy life. That, yeah, well, no, I suppose I have to make all those mistakes in order to be yeah. where I am now and have... I know the beginning and the end, it's mm. a bit in the middle, it's tricky, yes. and I don't do complicated water arts, and hats off to people that do, because I think that's probably the best way to do it, but I cannot do that. I just have to have it in my head, I have to sit down and I have to start writing, and rewrite, the way I plan is rewriting, because mm. I can only think, you know, I'll call it thinking, I can only think when I'm typing, I, I actually think through my mm. fingers on the keyboard. I trained as a, as a, a typist, in, in a, a university vacation. So I've been typing since I've been 18 and I love typing. So and very that's, fast. Probably. That's how I, I'm very yeah. fast and that's how I think. So uh, there's no point. I can sit down and I can plan everything out and the minute I start writing, it's gone. It's but changed yes. completely. So I've learned to trust. Can you describe um, an avocado bathroom suite <laughs> and call it the colour of snot? Yes. <laughs> Which is true. Those 1970. Um, yeah. <laughs> baths and basins and things were like that. I'm sure they're about to make a comeback. Which First, is, which won you the Whitbeard Prize? Which, which is still been. hugely popular. I'm, yes. I'm always so amazed that, you know, every time mm. I do an event, people come up with their battered 20 year old copies and say, This is my favourite book. And I'm like, Re Still, after all this time, it's yes. really, um, really gratifying. So for me, 
No, I mean, I'm, I'm very fearful of the referendum in 2014. Uh, I think it would be the most catastrophic thing imaginable if we voted yes. I, I was going to ask, are you a political mm. person and how do you feel I'm about not a political the, the drive anymore. for Scottish no, independence? No. Yeah. I used to be a political person, but not anymore. And I just, but the drive for independence, I think, is absolutely disastrous. That, you know, the country will be bankrupt on day one and mm. it will be horribly divisive. Why are you not a political person anymore? Mm -hmm. Oh, I think I've just settled into that kind of, you know, <laughs> soggy middle age where you just can't be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be, you know, I used to be an activist. I've been arrested for, you know, CND and all of those things. And I was an active member of the Labour Party. But now I look at them all and I think, oh, my God, you know, mm -hmm. you people are not, not people that I can be that interested in, I think. Apart from which, you've got a whole lot more books to write. You must be in the middle of another one right now, no doubt. No, no, I've... I've <sighs> I've done the first 5,000 words of one. In, in fact, I've done the first 10,000 words of three because I know I'm doing a lot of publicity this year. So I just mm. wanted something to think about. Mm. So to that, muse on. Yes. In first uh, class, yeah. having a nice glass of wine. In first class, Sounds yeah. pretty good to me. <laughs> There'll be a whole lot of avid readers waiting for your next book, I'm oh, sure. Thank gosh. you so much for being here, Kate Atkinson. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Next week, meet another top British writer, Kate Moss, whose books have been translated into 37 languages. Set largely in Carcassonne, a region of France famed for its fascinating history, her stories are always huge sellers. She'll be with me to talk about her latest novel, Citadel.